to everybody. <laughs> Sorry about that. Did have the stream all nice and running. Um, and uh, I made a really silly mistake. So I had to stop it and start it again. Which unfortunately means starting a whole new stream. Or an event or whatever they call it on YouTube and on Facebook. Because I stream to both at the same time. Uh, <clears throat> hopefully you can hear me alright because I've got Banjo with me today. My studio friend. And he's sitting pretty much on my mic and purring. Aren't you? He's a happy kitten. Uh. <laughs> hello, Julie. Nice to see you. Hello, hello. Yeah, we should. Hopefully, you should be able to. You should be able to hear me. Sounds like it's good. And you get to hear me and Studio Cat today. I'm gonna have to put you down in a minute. So, I just thought I'd pop on quickly today. Bit of a surprise stream. I used to do a lot of this kind of thing and it struck me recently that I'd almost stopped doing it. Um, just popping on and streaming sometimes, just turning on the cameras while I work. So I thought I would today. And I'm working on a new painting that I've just started. It's a 12 by 16, which is like practically a mural in my terms. Because um, I usually work really small. And this is the subject. Now I'm in an interesting situation at the moment because so far I've been working from a combination of photo, the reference photo, and from life. And um, because it's winter, it's only half past four in the afternoon here, but already it's getting dark outside. So I've had to knock the lights on because otherwise I wouldn't have enough light for the cameras. Uh, I'll explain what I've been doing as I go along. Let's switch over to them. That's very nice of you to say. Um, let's switch over to the e Sorry, hopefully you can hear me now. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. So I'm going to have to explain all that all over again. So um, I forgot I had one of the mics muted. So I hope you can hear me now, hopefully. Do let me know if you can hear me now. So, um, yeah, I started this painting yesterday. Um, and I, um, I started working on it in a combination of working from life um, and, oh, do you want down, little man? Me? Do you want down, little man? Okay. There we go. You don't have to jump. Good. Little old legs. Doesn't do to be jumping with help. Yeah, so I started uh, working on it from... I set it up. Obviously, I've got the setup here. So you saw it a moment ago on the other camera. Um, and I took a photo of it early on to kind of play around with the composition and crop it and see how I, how I wanted to crop it. And that photo became the one that I've got now that you can see, although I've also done a fair amount of digital processing on that as well, to control the values and try and match the color closer, more closely to what I'm actually seeing in the studio. But now, obviously it's, it's dark, 
So I've had to turn the lights on. So I can't really work from life now. So I'm left with the photo. But what I have been doing mostly is trying to get the background in roughly how I want it and to work on the cloth, which I'm still working on at the moment. And um, although the colours don't exactly match the photo, they are very, very close, as, far, as close as I can get them to what I'm seeing in life. Okay. Um, so you could say that this is kind of a, it's slightly experimental for me, I suppose. It's a long time since I've, I've done a painting just for the sake of doing a painting. I find myself teaching so much now that I very rarely paint, but today I am. Hello, good lad, you all right? Hi. I just want to get my chunk if that's okay. Yeah, all right. All right, thank you. A bit. Yep. <laughs> um, so this is where I am with it now. So the values and the chromas are fairly close to the photo. But the hues are very different. And let me show you, I'm going to show you the palette actually, because then you'll be able to see like where I'm doing my mixing at the moment. It's kind of small, but you can see I've got a huge number of, well, I've got quite a few anyway, Monsel chips out here, and they're all really, really low chroma. Because I've been trying to figure out the hues that I want to use to paint the cloth with, because, and the chroma as well, because it's slightly different in the light than it is in the shadow. So the deeper the shadow gets, the more chroma there is in the shadows, because this is, obviously cloth is very low chroma. Now, no, it doesn't look the same as the photo, but just to reiterate, these colors are the best that I can judge them from looking at this cloth from life. So I'm kind of using the form from the photo, the combination of the photo and life, and the colors are coming just from me judging them as closely as I can, I think, from life. And also bear in mind that the camera that I've got on the easel is different. So people who are used to my, <laughs> my workshops will be aghast at this, the mess on this palette, because usually I'm really, really neat. But what I've been doing is a lot of different experiments and messing about and changing the chromas and, and the hues that I'm using, even though everything is really, really low chroma, i.e. close to gray. I, can't, I don't think I can really get, keep the palette on and show the painting at the same time. So I suppose I'll just pop the palette on if there's anything that I think is, is really going to be um, interesting to show you. Uh, if the camera feed looks out of focus, Joseph, you could try either, it might be your internet connection, I'm definitely sending it out in, in, in good quality. So you could try refreshing the page, or um, if you're watching on YouTube, which I think you are on the bottom right, is the little gear icon, and you can look down there and um, up the quality because YouTube quite often puts it out at 480p and you want 1080, which is what I'm streaming at. So at the moment, I'm kind of, I want to move over into this area. I think the values need to come up a little bit, maybe here. I think maybe the exposure of my camera needs to come up a tiny bit as well. So this is kind of like today, I'm, I'm kind of experimenting and I, so this isn't like an organized stream where I teach it's just this is what I'm working on in the studio at the moment. But at the moment I would say I'm guardedly reasonably happy that I've got this that is actually needs to come down quite a bit here that I've got um I think I'm getting close to what I wanted. I want to get all of the background and the cloth at least blocked in before I start working on the colours of the all of this stuff here, you know, like the main subject. I want to spend a little bit more time getting all of this, all of these bits. Let me show you the palette quickly and I'll tell you what I've got on my palette today. So this is lead white. I've got a tiny bit of titanium white, which I sometimes use for the very highest values. This is cad yellow, yellow ochre, quinacridone rose. And although these are quite high chroma, I'm dropping them right down. It just to allow me to change the hue a little bit as I go, you know. 
Um, this is ultramarine blue. This is winter and newt and permanent magenta. So you can see I can go all the way from orange through to kind of a blue, to a blue, a blue red. So in the light, the cloth goes fairly blue red and in the shadow, it goes more towards orange yellow. Raw umber, the most useful color in the world. Um, burnt umber, which I've I very rarely used, but I've been putting it back on the palette a little bit late, lately. And ivory black, which I'm using a lot for dropping the chroma. Um, So I'm thinking about the values and I want to start moving over to this side. Annoyingly, I forget, you can see in the bottom right of the actual reference photo down here, you can still see my brushes, which is a bit annoying. Um, so what I want is the kind the values that I want, say, like right down here. Let's get my brushes out of the way. So this will give you an idea how, when I demonstrate stuff, like when I put out videos, I think sometimes it all looks like it happens rather quickly. And to be honest with you, when I'm demonstrating something, it is quick because I don't want to uh, lose people's attention. I want to get the information across. This will show you how tortuously slowly I work <laughs> when I'm just working on my own stuff. And this one today, probably even more tortuously slow than normal because you know, I'm trying to figure out a lot of stuff as I go. So I think right down the bottom here, I want to be like a value three. So I'm using the Munsell chips a lot at the moment to sort out my values. That's value four. That's probably too light. I want to be even lower than that. And I'm, now I'm kind of, I'm starting to feel a little bit more confident about where I'm going. Let me put the palette on for a second because I'm going to do a bit of mixing. I'm mixing a lot more on the fly. And this is something which you will never see me do when I'm teaching. Because I'm trying to teach uh, the kind of the approach to mixing more carefully. So anyone who's on a workshop with me at the moment, look away. <laughs> because <laughs> this is how I mix when I'm doing it by myself. So I know what I'm after. I know I want a value three, which is like down the bottom of the value scale. Get some lead white up. I know I want it to be slightly yellow like this is. Um, slightly yellow and I, and I want to drop the chroma. So I've got raw umber and cad yellow, which has given me a very greenish low value yellow. And then I'm gonna drop the chroma with a mixture of black and white. So a lot of this is, give me a value three chip. Is this value three? That's two. This is value three, so I can, I can check the value against that one. Looks about right, actually. So by mixing between the two, I can drop the chroma. It gives me a way to drop the chroma really reliably. And I want to be right down. I want that. Right down the bottom down here. So it should be slightly lighter than what I've got there. No, it's about the same. It's going to have to be slightly lighter than that. Go up a notch. So the basic, I mean, the way I've done all of the cloth that I've got on there so far is just to rough it in quite quickly in large shapes and then uh, to start refining it down. So I'm just, I'm trying to think about how can I explain this? I'm trying to think about the planes, about the forms as I work. So deeper in the shadow goes more yellow. They come out into the light. It's going slightly more towards, that's way too much purple, towards blue. So they're kind of, it, they're, they're difficult to see these transitions because they're very subtle. 
But if I show you, they're subtle because the chroma is very low. So this is chroma, like to very colorful, to near to gray. And I'm like below here, I'm really close to gray the whole time, you know? And in the shadows, the hue is around here. And in the lights, the hue is like around here. And it goes through these on the way. So I'm trying to control this really, really carefully just to see what kind of effect I can get by really nailing those. Really nailing those. Yeah, Ginny, I'll bring it up in a minute because the way I've got things set up at the moment, I kind of just switched the cameras on. Um, so it's difficult for me to show you both. So I want to show you what I'm mixing at the moment. So this <clears throat> is Rublev lead white. Um, this is lead white number two, which I think it's in, in walnut oil. Yeah, PW1 lead in walnut oil. But this is so hard that I can hardly get, look at this, I can hardly get it out anymore because it's quite, it's been hanging around a while. So what I'm doing at the moment to get the paint out of the tube is I'm squeezing it with pliers so I can get the last bits of paint out. Because it's so stiff in there now, I actually can't get it out just using my hands. Oh, you know what? I can't really be bothered with this. But you can see, hopefully, like how hard that is. It's standing up. And then what I need to do is, if I put a few drops of linseed oil, it will only take a small amount. I can turn it back into lead paint again. But you know what? I, I really can't be bothered with that at the moment and because it's a mess on. And happily I don't have to because finally, after months of waiting, supremepaints.co.uk if you're in the UK and you want some lead white it's pretty hard to get hold of these days this is from supremepaints.co.uk and I'm hoping that in here is hiding even though it's such a big box two tubes of lead white paint Looks like it's going to be it. It's like Christmas. Unboxing new paint. Yes. Yes. The Supreme Paint Company. They're brilliant. Two tubes of Rublev Lead White Number One. And what's probably going to happen with this, the first one that I start squeezing out, is it's going to come out with a lot of oil as well mixed in. Let's see what happens. I know, it's pretty much perfect. Oh, look at that. That's what you want. So this is lead white number one. This is lead white in um, linseed oil. <laughs> Ginny says, new art supplies are the best fun, aren't they though? This is like, oh, the consistency is perfect. Hasn't separated or anything yet. Let's try looking after this. Oh, I'm a happy man. What was I doing? Oh yeah, for the light, the value is like about a value nine. So I would be putting like lead white, tiny bit of um, ivory black and a little bit of, maybe a bit of magenta blue. See, I know where I want the hue to go. So when I do this stuff, when I'm teaching, I'm like incredibly exact um, because I'm teaching a method and I, I try to teach concepts as clearly as I possibly can. When I do it myself, I kind of chuck it together because I know where I want to be. So I find personally, when you're kind of, I'm going to check the value though, when you're used to using um, Monsoor, it, it gets to a point where it's almost second nature and you kind of, you develop a, is this value nine? Yes, it is good. You develop a kind of a mental map of color space in three dimensions in your brain. And all learning is actual physical change in the brain. And with that mental map, you can navigate around the color space fairly easily if you know where you want to be. So 
So that's value nine, that's the highest value. So I'm just putting in the lightest parts. Oh, forgot to switch back to the, sorry about that. Can't see what I'm doing, can you? So this is the lightest parts that I'm putting in there. This is fairly light all the way down and then it will gradually get darker. So this is like the next value down as it comes down. because so I need to show this plane change. So this is one of the highest values that I've got really in the painting is the very top. So it's gradually going to come down, 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 down in value. So I'll put the colors that I want in first. So this is going to look slightly bluish gray against the yellow of the shadow. Hello, Wayne. Yeah, Royal Mail totally did their job. And I got to tell you, Supreme Paints, I ordered that paint yesterday. If you're in the UK, I mean, it's really expensive paint. It's, it's lead by, you know, but they don't, I probably shouldn't say this on live TV, but they don't require you to fill in any city forms like Jackson's do. They will just send you the paint that you need because they know that you're an artist and that's not what those um, laws were made for. They were made to stop big contractors using dangerous paint, which no one does anymore anyway. So the hue changes, let me tell you about the hue changes because they're interesting, even though they're so subtle. So I don't know if you can see this like on the palette. Okay. I'm going like blue magenta through kind of red, reddish orange into yellow. So that's light into shadow. So the value is going down. The hue is switching slightly a little as I, it's, it's, shifting as I go down and the chroma is rising as I go into the shadow. So these are the parts that are kind of in value terms in between and they're slightly reddish. So just throwing it on. So yeah, this panel is actually really beautiful panel I think it's um it's a linen panel that I made myself so I got a it's a it's I think it was an ampersand gesso board panel that I then stuck some fine linen to which I sized with um rabbit skin glue so as we go up to the light, I'm going back towards the blue again. Sized with rabbit skin blue, and then, um, can you see that shift happening there? It's subtle, but. And then um, once that was dry, I put a coat of oil primer over it, lead oil primer, thickly with this, like troweled it on, you know, with this, the curved side of this. And you get this amazing kind of surface then. It's slick, but it's, it, but it has, it's organic, you know, it's, it's not perfectly even. So I'm going to figure out the details later. So this is how I started all of this cloth over here. None of the cloth is finished yet. I'm kind of working it out as I go. But I'm just at the point now where I'm fairly happy, I think, with the colors that I'm getting. Joe says, Joe, you know I'm from Yorkshire originally, North Yorkshire. Um, Joe says, can I use water-soluble oils? Don't see why not. I don't see why not. I'm not aware of any major problems with them anyway. This would all be fairly light too. It's interesting, by the way, when I'm... Sometimes I've got the photo up at the moment, 
on my screen and sometimes I've got what I'm streaming and it's kind of interesting because I'm seeing what you're seeing so it's almost it's kind of like me working sight size you know I've got the photo next to the screen so I can it gives me a kind of an independent judge of how I'm doing <laughs> on the value so what I'm doing is I'm putting the paint down and while it's still very wet and malleable and I can shift it about I'm uh, blending the edges this needs to come much more kind of with a soft flat synthetic brush you're from North Yorkshire I used to I was uh, brought up in Gisborough I don't know if you know Gisborough. It's not North Yorkshire now. You know how they're always moving the boundaries around up there. Um, when I was a kid, it was North Yorkshire. Now I, I don't even know what it's called. It was Cleveland for a while and then Redcar and Teesside, and I don't know what they call it now. But that's where I'm from. I'd say overall the photo is tending a lot bluer than the than the actual, than real life. So these colors have been chosen, just to reiterate, these colors have been chosen from life. And I haven't quite figured out how to get that photo to look the same. Is what, I, is what I'm judging with the chips. So like, you know, I'm taking these chips, like really low chroma chips like this, very close to gray. Um, and I'm imagine that this is the actual subject, right? And I'm holding them up with a color checker like this against the light. So this won't give me the values, but it will help me to judge the chroma, you know? So I can see a little bit of the color underneath and then I can move the chip and, and, and judge them. Because when you get to incredibly low chromas like this, it's insanely hard. In fact, I'm Personally, I believe it's pretty much impossible to judge those colors accurately with your, just using your the good old human perceptual system because it's just not built for that. Depends how interested you are in getting really accurate color. Um, at the moment, I'm very interested in it on this one anyway. Oh, Richmond, right, nice. Anna says, what are the benefits of lead paint? I guess they don't do it in water soluble. Shouldn't think so, no. Don't know, no. But there is a medium that converts standard oils to water soluble. Do you think that would work? I have no idea. Um, the reason I like lead paint is um, it dries more quickly than titanium. Titanium dries very, very slowly. So I should be able to be putting another layer over this tomorrow um, or possibly the day after. Uh, and the other thing I like about it is, that's too dark. The other thing I like about it is the handling qualities. The handling qualities, it's, um, it goes down differently to titanium white. Titanium white tends to be very flat and lead white is easier to build up textures with. So most of this, one here is also too dark. So I'm just kind of squinting down and trying to get my values pretty much right in the big shapes at the moment. And when I'm happy with that, then I'll slowly begin going in and working on detail, adding a bit of detail, like the little creases and stuff. Slow, slow process. Very welcome, Marco. I'm not sure if it's going to be all that interesting to watch today, you know, because I'm going to be working really slowly, but I'll try and explain at least some of what I'm doing as I go. So this is like this small area of shadow. just to the right of this, which is an edge of the fold of the cloth. 
So I'd have a hard edge on the left where that's the edge of the form. The cast is the shadow and this is a cast shadow so I'll have a soft edge here. But it goes quite quickly into the light there. Over here the value is down a little. So I'm trying to get the right value, but roughly the right shape in the right area at about the right chroma with the hue shift gradually happening from yellow towards more blue. So as the value goes down, the, the chroma goes up and the hue shifts slightly. Hello, Michelle. Michelle says, those shadows look like a mixture of low chroma orange and blue areas. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much. It's Yes, in fact. I mean, it's all really low chroma. So I was just explaining that, actually. Let me show you quickly the palette again. Don't be shocked, all right, Michelle. <laughs> I know it's not very carefully laid out, but this is what my palettes look like when I'm painted by myself, because there's been a lot of trial and error on this one. So at the top end of the value scale here, it's a little bit with a bit of magenta and blue, ultramarine blue, so it's more blue. As we go down into the half tones, it's going more towards red, reddish, orange, and then down in the deep shadows, it's going more towards yellow, and the chroma is going up as I go gradually down the value range. So this is my light to shadow. This is some other stuff that I was playing with earlier on. So one of the things that I find a lot when I'm painting in this studio here is that, um, and I think it's, it's, it's generally true. See, this is going down in value, so I want it to go slightly more towards the yellow now. Um, is that uh, with very low chroma surfaces like this cloth, what tends to happen is in the light, the chroma is very low. You know, people talk a lot about cool shadows and warm darks, which in a sense I am doing now, although I personally find that, I find that rather inexact, a rather an inexact description, because, um, you know, what's actually happening is the chroma is coming up in the darks, the hue is shifting towards a what well, you could say warmer hue from from blue to yellow. How much of this detail do I want in here? I can't decide really. Let's just blot this in and think about it. Because the chances are, like going off the edge, I'm running out of paint, going off the edge of the um, towards the edge of the painting here, I'm not going to be too bothered about what happens there. I may end up losing a lot of this altogether, you know, and just kind of scraping it back, I don't know yet, and have it disappear out into just a kind of atmosphere. So that was, that. this is just raw umber and um, yellow, which would be quite high chroma. I wonder what that would look like. If I put it, say, here, I should use a clean brush, really. Because it will mix with what's already there, bring the chroma up a little bit. This is too dark, I think, now. And bringing it up, I'm going to bring up a little bit of yellow into it as well, so I can have a bit more chroma in there. So the yellow, I'm bringing in yellow and white to raise the chroma and raise the value without going crazy on the chroma. And let's see what happens. A lot of messing about at this point and just trying stuff. Probably giving it too much chroma, but the value is better. And also for me, when I'm doing painting like this, when I'm just painting for myself, I'm less, yeah, that chrome is too much. I'm less, uh, 
Um, what am I trying to say? I'm more inclined to mess about a little bit in some parts and see what happens. So I'm just putting black and white in now to drop the crow and back down. So this is like, um, you know, starting with painting, especially when you're, for me anyway, coming in. I can't pick you up at the moment because I've got brushes in my hand and everything. So it's a bit like, um, you know, I have a, a rough idea in mind of where I want this painting to go, but I'm, you know, everything is still kind of up for grabs at this point, really. It, it could very much go in, you know, it could, it could tend in a number of different directions, and I'm not really sure yet where it's going to go. how resolved it's going to be. I think I want some areas to be very carefully resolved and others maybe not so much. Let's go lighter than that. So this is more towards blue. I'm going to put a tiny bit of magenta in there as well. Light eats the chroma. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. Um, oh, I've got some yellow in that down. Chuck it away. Uh, yeah. I think it's more a case of in the shadows, the chroma is added rather than it gets taken away in the lights because the, the, the local is incredibly, is very low chroma already. But I think what happens in the shadow, a little bit of magenta, a little bit of blue, a tiny bit of black. Um, what happens in the shadows is that bounce light kind of from within the room, I call it the ambient light, reflects, this is only true of interior light like this, reflects into the shadows. And that light has hue and chroma. So it's kind of like reflected light, I think, but it's like the general light within the room. If that makes sense. See, I'm not sure about having this light part, very light part out here. I guess it looks all right. So I'm really just uh, feeling my way through this at the moment. There's a beautiful fold down here where there's some reflected light bouncing into it from the right, so I want to get that in there. Welcome, Sky. I'm not doing as good a job as I usually do from top of the house. Chroma is in the reflected areas. Sean says, in the workshop, I was really surprised how much even a small amount of chroma. Comes up in the cloth, yeah. 
I mean, everything is, is really relative. So if everything is really low chroma, then um, then a tiny shift in chroma can look like a mountain. <laughs> you know, it can look like a like a lot more than it really is. Bring in black as I'm going slightly down, tiny bit of red, which will give me a going slightly towards red, drop the chroma, drop the value. Coming down here, this has got to be lower. Lower value down there. And we'd have the lower value part here. I'm not sure what hue that reflected light is going to be. And because I'm working from the photo and the natural light has gone now, I can't really judge it. So it's definitely going to be darker than this part than the light. I'd have a little bit more light in some parts here just to show that's direct light. So this is really a lovely part of cloth to play with because I've got three clear planes. I've got the light side, the side which is facing me, which is tending towards shadow and then reflected light there. And then behind that is gonna be a dark, a dark plane, which will help it to show. Let's just, because my brushes are in the way and I don't actually know what it looks like there, let's just make that all dark for now. So this, all of this cloth over here, I've already done two sessions on. So this is how it's going on, like in the first, in the first kind of layer, if you like, a lot, a lot looser. And scruffier while I'm I'm feeling my way through the values and the drawing and trying to make the colours work. I think my shadow got too dark here, just a little. But I like personally I like to keep some, especially going out towards the edge of the painting, generally speaking. I like to to keep a bit of brushiness. So what my my vague plan at the moment, such as it is, <laughs> is very vague, is that this area around here is eventually going to be very carefully resolved. Uh, this area will be carefully resolved, and as we come out to the edges, it will be less so. Or I may end up like deciding that the whole thing wants to be finished very carefully. I don't really know at the moment. I'm gonna just wait and see. So I've got a vague picture in my mind of how I want this to look. I've got some vague ideas about where I want it to go. Um, this has too much chroma. And I'm gonna just see as I go along. Probably gonna work, be working on this painting for a while, I think. So I'm bringing in some black and white to drop the chroma here. Mixing, like, you'll never see me do this in a workshop. So the workshop Michelle's talking about is one we're, we're on at the moment, still life painting workshop. And obviously everything is a lot more structured when I'm teaching those. Don't, won't very often see mixing like actually on the painting, but I actually, I do that quite a lot when I'm just doing my own stuff. And says, Paul, do you ever work on more than one painting at a time? Be honest with you, and I'm lucky if I get to work on any at a time at the moment, because I, I just have taken on so much teaching stuff, which is not like, it's not a bad thing. I mean, I really love it. It's just the most inspiring thing. But um, just lately, it's been bothering me that I, I haven't been really doing 
frankly any of my own painting at all and um eventually the it, the need just got too great and even though there's lots of other stuff that i should be doing at the moment i'm no i just had to start this painting i put the setup together yesterday and i thought i'm painting that because i keep putting these setups together and thinking that's nice and then photographing them as a kind of a mental note of how it looked and never getting around to painting any of them i've got loads of paint loads of um photos on my hard drive back top that I've never got to paint and I, I don't I haven't yet tried doing a finished painting completely from photos I want that you know I've become convinced of their use how useful they can be but I, I need that um I need I need the subject there in front of me from a practical point of view because I'm not good enough with photography and photo manipulation to be able to reliably um, make really good photos yet uh, but also well I mean I make good photos but I'm sorry I don't mean really good I'm trying to think about too many things at once I mean accurate completely accurate in terms of color I get them close now but I'm never completely convinced. What was I using? Raw umbar, black. So as I say, when I'm teaching mixing, I never mix like this. But but once you kind of get used to using, like the way I teach mixing is with Monster. Once you get used to it, you find that you can navigate really quickly and easily around the color uh, space. Without, uh, I still do premixing. I mean, when I come to these uh, objects, I will premix quite carefully, and they will give me the starting points. But this has been a lot of this painting so far has been a kind of a, a like a, a questioning, partly probably because I'm I just did a, a teaching session on cloth, and it raised some questions for me that I wanted to resolve. So it's partly that, I suppose. And um, it reminded me, while I was teaching, it reminded me of a painting by Vermeer. I forget the title now, but it's in the National Gallery in London. And uh, it's a painting of someone a woman holding i think she's holding a, a letter and um she's got a silk dress on and the way he painted the folds it's like you i could sit there and look at it all day it's sheer poetry i mean it's not just incredibly well done it is incredibly well done but it's also something really hard to define but very beautiful about it I mean, really, I suppose it's a little odd to get worked up about the way someone has painted folds, but you all will know what I mean. <clears throat> Just noticed I'm getting sinking in in my background now as this is drying, so that's um, the value is a little, and the chroma is dropping here from what it really needs to be. So I'm going to have to wait for this to dry completely because I just put a second layer on it today. If I'm really honest, I put that second layer on before it was completely dry, so I've got terrible sinking in there now, and that's happened today. So I'll have to oil that out. Oscar says, is there any difference in the result between painting the color as one sees it and building up the color through many, many layers of glaze over a grisaille? Uh, I've never done grisaille, so I couldn't really tell you. Um, but I suspect that you would struggle if you were trying to reach very high chromas. I suspect that you would struggle to reach them. So, um, you know, like in, if you wanted a, a kind of an impressionist result, it's, it really helps to be painting on a white panel. 
think, so that you um, get the highest crumb. As as far as I'm aware, I mean, if you, I think you can get a little bit more chroma out of colours if you. Um, If you glaze, so if you glazed a red over a red, it would be more red. Um, but I think glazing over a, a neutral, because oil paint is, is necessarily transparent and becomes more so as it ages, I think you would trouble to hit, you would find it difficult to hit the higher chromas, which isn't, I don't mean to say that it's, it's a, you shouldn't do it, or you know, painting over grisaille is a problem, just that you would need to be aware. Most of the painters that I know that work over grisaille generally aren't after a particularly high chroma in their work. You know, they get their beauty from somewhere else, from like if you think of, I mean, Sadie Veneri does, um, she does do Anna Prima painting, but a lot of her more finished pieces are done over grisaille. And I think the beauty of those pieces, they are really beautiful. If you've seen those ones she does of, wax paper and stuff. The beauty of those pieces is in the values and the chroma is generally quite low, by which I mean the colours aren't particularly intense. It depends what, you, what you're after, you know. For me, like when I come to the apples, I want the maximum highest chroma I can possibly get. Like, you know, I'm following a different style, you could say. So at the moment I'm trying to do, now I've got the main blocks in, I'm trying to do, find changes to, value and chroma across the surface. A lot of it is wrong still, I, I know, but it's, it's inching closer bit by bit. <laughs> Catherine, no procrastination allowed. Get back to the cloth. <laughs> I'm, I'm only kidding. But, you know, Sometimes you just need to step back, don't you? Me too. So these are some complex forms, like I'm starting to get into the smaller forms now. Some of them, it's quite complex, and I know I haven't quite resolved them yet. They're more kind of notes of what I'm going to need to do in those areas. I can't, I'm so annoyed that in the, in the reference photo, there's, I've left my brushes there in the way. Like how stupid a thing is that to do? I can't actually see what happens in this part of the subject. And I won't be able to see until tomorrow when I've got a window natural light again and I can actually have a look. So I probably shouldn't do any more there really. So what I'm trying to get here is, I think the values are all right, not too bad. So I'm trying to show these, how these plane changes are working more with the edges. So you get this kind of slightly hard edge between the light and the shadow here because they're kind of crinkles. So the value goes down and in a few places it's soft, but in some places it's slightly harder. And then here where the plane change over this side goes into the reflected light, which I can bring up the value of, is a very soft edge. And um, getting those edge qualities right is really, really key to creating form in fabric. So I'm actually, I've just started working on a little mini course, which I'm going to put out, hopefully in the next few weeks, very cheaply, which will be about painting folds. So this edge between the reflected light here, and this part, I want, let me make sure this is about the right shape. I want a very soft edge. So I'm going to get a small brush out, one of the ones that got in the way. 
and soften this edge down here because I'm actually working pretty small now. I'm a little bit worried about how small my main subjects are here, but I have a feeling that it may end up that the main subject of this painting is the cloth anyway. And then I want a slightly harder edge here where it turns into the dark, but not quite as hard as that one. Soften that off a little bit. And the value is too low. Yeah. <laughs> Marcia says, you could always include the brushes and the cup that changed the pink. Uh, I guess I could, but I think compositionally speaking, I really don't like them. <laughs> I really don't like them down there. I don't want them there with that strong diagonal, you know, down there. I don't think it works. <laughs> I don't want anything obscuring the cloth. That's a strange and interesting fold. Go on there. Uh, actually, uh, I really like painting cloth. I've come to a realization lately. I don't, I'm, I'm a bit schizophrenic when it comes to painting. I have times when I just want to bang things out really quick and I love the brushiness. And other times where I really want to try to focus in and make something very refined and strong. And I'm feeling a little bit that I'm kind of in one of those phases at the moment. And I just really want to try to refine down this cloth. So this is all still at this point. I'm imagining that this, the cloth that I'm painting now is way rougher than it's going to be when it's done. So I'm trying to get the overall shapes and everything working well at the moment. I think it's coming. Thank you, Lisa. Hello, you're in Chester, just up the road. I'm in the Cotswolds. Well, kind of just up the road, you know. So I'm looking at edges now, thinking about where I need to refine down and soften some edges and shapes. Most of the main shapes are in. So it's about starting to look at smaller forms now and refining the edges I'm getting, refining the shapes. Now I, I realize that this is must be achingly slow to watch, but this is, I guess, is how I work when I'm painting carefully, you know. Although my palette is a complete state. Let me show you the palette again. <laughs> I'm normally so careful on my palette, but hopefully you, but like anyone who's watching who's, who's has done or is doing a workshop with me will still be able to see like broadly speaking, I'm light to shadow. You know, I do have a kind of a string here. It's just very, um,
It's a little looser, let's say, than you might be used to seeing me work with. A little less disciplined. So I've got three brushes at the moment. I've got a, a mid-tone brush, a highlight brush, and a shadow brush, and I'm f kind of flicking between them as I'm putting in the, trying to think about very much about the, the planes, you know, the angle to the light. Um, and that defines which brush I'm, I'm picking out to paint with. I do love painting cloth though. I'm not happy with this area here yet. I'm not 100% sure what it is that I'm not happy about. I'm trying to think that through. Might be the drawing. Proper South Wales indeed. <laughs> well, not really, but not far. <laughs> Crystal is laughing at my messy palette. Oh, Peter, good to see you. Peter said, I think the light cloth behind the brushes actually may take away attention from the top. Yeah, maybe I, I was I was thinking about that and thinking I don't know is that, but it's so hard to judge at this point, you know, because as soon as you put you know yourself like anyone who paints knows as soon as you put something different in everything changes. It's a whole new set of relationships, you know. It's like adding a different chord to a piece of music, then everything that's already there sounds different. You know. So it's really hard to judge at the moment. I won't really know, I don't think, until I'm further through. But, I, you know, I mean, I'm expecting this painting, frankly, to take quite a long time. So I'm, I'm not too worried. I'll probably getting to the point where I, I shouldn't be doing too much more on the cloth now. Um, because I can... I'm already feeling that I, I want to know what's going to be going on up here with the colour and everything and the values before I can really make more decisions about the cloth. But I'm, I'm going to spend a little bit of time trying to correct the shapes. So, you know, I can actually work from the photo now, even though I've got to be careful that I don't get too freaked out by how different the photo looks in terms of colour, but I can use it for the form. And then I'll probably find, like, I'll get up in the morning and come in here and open the blind and um, find I've made a horrendous mess. Scrape it off and start again. Well, hopefully not. This is too... Right, there's not enough plane change there. This is too light. So I want to be feeling the plane change from the front, the big overall plane change from the front of the cloth to this bit here, and I'm not feeling it enough yet, don't think. This is too light. 
So I'm looking for bits that are too light. So that I can feel that plane change more. Ooh, that is too light. This is too light. So it's just a value change. I'm just losing the value change between the front plane, like the highest values in the front plane. And the value of the top. Because the value of the top it is right at the top of the value range, you know. I've allowed the the lights. It's really easy to do, but I've I've allowed the lights on the front plane to get too light, which is losing that feeling of of the change in plane. So I'm going to wrap up this session soon. So what I want to do now mostly is try to, this is probably going to set up overnight. So I want to make sure that there's, there's nothing really glaringly out about the edge handling because the edge handling is, is more difficult to do. This is really bothering me. It's it, there's something about it that just isn't doesn't quite live. Uh, it's certainly not that accurate in terms of shape. So it could be that. There's something about this area here is really beginning to bother me. I think it needs to come down in value down here as we go down, and I haven't got that. Towards red. Oops, sorry, I'm not keeping up. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave this session here for now. I'm going to let this set up overnight don't know if I'm going to be able to paint on this tomorrow. If I do, I'll switch the cameras on at some point and pop on, perhaps. Um, but I don't... I don't want to push this too far when I haven't got the actual thing in front of me with the correct light. And I'm a little bit worried that I'm starting to get increasingly close to the photo, and I don't want to go too far without having um, the actual subject there as well to guide me. Christopher says the soft edge on that triangular form is not coming forward. Yeah, I need to look at that form and think about it a little bit. I think that improved it when I dropped the value as it went down, but I think it needs a bit more thinking about still. Um, but we're getting there. Quite a few things still going to need some adjustment. So I'm mostly when I, whilst I'm looking at this, I'm squinting down and seeing if I'm feeling the form coming through. I think it's starting to come, but it's definitely going to need a little bit more.
Going to need a little bit more twiddling, you could say. And Stu Joe Cat definitely thinks it's time for me to stop because he wants his dinner. And that's fair enough. So thanks very much, everybody, for coming and watching. I'm going to wrap up now. Um, maybe on tomorrow. Um, maybe. Uh, might just paint without the cameras. What day is it tomorrow? Thursday. I might be on tomorrow. If I'm not, I'll probably be on Friday. Um, and I do intend to start doing a few more of these kind of live sessions now because it's been a while and I haven't been doing as many of them. I hardly been doing any just, you know, just for fun. And I missed it. So I'm going to get back to doing a few more. So, oh my, hello, I didn't know you were there. And Nicole too. Okay, I'm going to wrap up now and I'll see you all again very soon.